CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to our world where real demons exist in this strange and brooding land behind the creaking door. Yes, we offer you real ghouls. No artificial anything. Curiously enough, authentic ghouls are not decaying bodies rising from the slimes of time. They are found almost anywhere, cleverly disguised as pleasant and attractive people. In fact, the people you're about to meet live in an attractive and fashionable home in Rose Hill, one of New York City's more affluent suburbs. They are young and attractive, all right. But to hear them talk... Ah, the mixture's ready. In fact, it looks better than usual. The blood was very rich when I drew it. God, this one's going to be a complete success. It better be, considering who we're dealing with. Nothing, nothing is going to go wrong. We've had our mistakes, but then who hasn't? Lucifer isn't perfect. Robert, don't blaspheme at a time like this. Our mystery drama, The Waiting Room, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Duran and stars Larry Haynes and Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The forces of darkness don't always linger in the shadows. Sometimes the most evil beings take the guise of sincerity, honesty, and openness. Who would imagine, for instance, that evil could be found in a swinging, noisy, jumping discotheque in New York City? A place of music, swirling lights, and life. Let's visit just such a disco now. And while the forces of evil may not be too immediately apparent, as our story unfolds, well, don't say I didn't warn you. This place looks promising. It's supposed to be the hottest disco in town. See anyone you like? Let's circulate. Keep your eyes open. Certainly can. Mm -hmm. Nice young crowd, too. How about that couple over there? The ones just going back to their table. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Let's try that. Excuse us. I uh, wonder if we could join your table. The place is so crowded it looks like we'll have to double up. Sure. Come on. Sit down. We're all in this together. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm Bob Carson. This is my wife, Rhoda. Oh, Marty Lanning. Uh, my wife, Charlotte. Hi. Hi. How are you? you two look as if you're celebrating. Corsage, champagne. Our first wedding anniversary. Hello. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Do you live in the city? The village. You? Uh, suburbanites. We're from Rose Hill. Mm. Rose Hill. Pretty classy. Oh, we lived in the village ourselves. I love it. What's your line, Marty? I'm a phys ed instructor in Columbia. Do they need a good coach at Rose Hill High? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we could always ask. Oh, there's another one of our favorites. Excuse us. Yes, certainly be our guest. Come on, Charlotte. Let's dance. Back soon. We never miss a number. I like them. What do you think? I agree. They do fine. But maybe uh, we ought to shop around a little more. Hmm? Uh, waiting room's getting awfully crowded. Yes, I know. I think they're ideal. Well... We can try. If they don't measure up, we can always let them go. Here it is, Lundy Lane. Wow. These homes. Mm, they're okay. Mm. Imagine being invited to Rose Hill for the weekend. Okay, what do we look for now? Oh, uh, two white pillars and a sign that says Carson. We sure hit it off with Bob and Rhoda Carson. I like them right away. I mean, they're rich and all that, but they make you feel comfortable. Mm. Oh, I see two pillars up ahead. That must be it. Yes, there's a sign. Some driveway. You can't even see the house. Marty, 
Look at that bird on the left pillar. Why, well, it looks like a crow. It is a crow. It's huge. I didn't think crows got that big. <gasps> there it goes. Oh, we startled it when we turned in. Ooh, this really is country. <gasps> wow, there's the house. It's just what you'd expect at the end of a drive like this. Sure is quiet. It's so peaceful in the country, so they say. Yeah. Marty, what's the matter? You sound so down all of a sudden. All of a sudden, I don't think I want to go through with this weekend. Why? I don't know. I'm here, and suddenly I want to go back to New York. Oh, for heaven's sakes, we can't do that. Well, I know we can't, but... Charlotte, look. Up there. Where? That window on the left wing of the house. It's the crow. Sitting on a perch on the windowsill. It belongs here? I don't know. I've heard of people training falcons. Maybe the Carsons train crows. Hello, you two. Well, here we go. Oh, cheer up, Marty. We'll have a good time. I saw you drive up. We're delighted you could make it. Hi, Rhoda. It's quite a uh, bungalow you've got here. Now, just leave your things in the car. Robert will get them later. Come on around to the pool. Oh, we have another guest for the weekend. I'd like you to meet him. Uh, say, Rhoda, is that your crow we saw? It was on one of your windows soon. Mm-hmm. That's Caligula. You'll see him from time to time. He won't bother you. <laughs> He's a friend of ours. This place is just heaven. Oh, me. Bert. Meet Charlotte and Marty Lanning. All right. This is Bert Thompson. Oh, nice to know you. Hi, Bert. Oh, sit down, everyone. I'll get the martinis going. Oh, and there are fresh bathing suits in the bathhouse if you want to take a swim. Quite a layout, isn't it? Fabulous. Uh, Rhoda says you're from the village. Yeah, Christopher Street. <laughs> I'm on West 44th. And I sure appreciate a weekend away from the city. Say, Bert, mm. uh, what does Bob do for a living? It must be stocks or something to keep a place like this. You mean you don't know? No, they never mentioned it. Well, I thought you and the Carsons were friends. No, we only met last Saturday night at the Pearl Fishers on 3rd Avenue. Oh, I thought I was the newcomer. Uh, I met him last Sunday at Jones Beach. They had their blanket next to mine. We got to talking, and they invited me here. Oh, for heaven's sakes, we thought you knew them. <laughs> Not till last Sunday. Well, it seems to be a hobby of theirs, inviting strangers home for the weekend. What do you think of our candidates? So far, so good. We'll know better by dinner time. Yes. You know, that Thomas chap has the physique. If his history is right... We'll start tomorrow night. And take the couple on Sunday. Mm. We've got to ease the tensions in the waiting room. I'm getting worried. Relax, my dear. It's nothing new. We've been at this for centuries. Come on in, you cowards. Water's fine. But I've had enough for one day. I should think a former Olympic swimmer would live in the water. <laughs> I'm out of training. Swimming strictly for pleasure now. I wish some of my students were in good a shape as you. Well, you never really lose it. You must have been healthy all your life. Never a sick day in all my 24 years. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, very good. Uh, no allergies in your family? No history of cancer? Heart trouble? My great-grandparents are still living. How wonderful. And you're relaxed, too. You're not the nervous type. No. Robert, hmm? I think you ought to get the barbecue fire going. Yes, that's a good idea. Give me a hand, Bert. Oh, glad to. We'll be ready to eat in an hour. So you and Charlotte are practically newlyweds. Yeah, we met in college, but we waited till I got my master's. You both seem to be in good health, too. Oh, fitness is my business. Well, good. Stay that way. You and Bob seem unusually interested in fitness. Well, we are. It's very important. I mean, our fitness. Why did Bob want to know about Bert's family history? Hey, Marty, give me a towel, will you? Oh, Robert didn't mean anything by that. It's just, you know, polite interest. Oh, water's wonderful. Oh, I don't see why you don't go in. Oh, maybe later. I'm going to start laying out the salad. Now, you two just relax. I'll have some chores for you later. I'm going to go get dressed. Uh, Charlotte. What? There's something... I don't know how to put my finger on it. Marty, what's the matter? There's something here that's... Oh, well, nothing. Forget it. Good night, Charlotte. See you in the morning. That's the last of them. They've all gone to bed. Good. I'll lock up, and then we'd better make some preparations. Good. I'll meet you in the waiting room. Oh. Um.
Oh, my lovely creature, how restless you are tonight. There you are. Fresh water. See, you should hold until the morning. I'll freshen it all up tomorrow. All secure. Not a sound from any of our guests. The suburban air must be too much for them. I'll be glad when we're finished. The birds are terribly restless. We're never finished, Rhoda. Well, you know what I mean. Suppose they get suspicious. Suppose they decide to leave. Before they we won't get... leave until we're ready to have them leave. Caligula will see to that. I hope so. Really, Rhoda, you act as though this was our first time. Well, I'm always nervous just before we begin. So many things can go wrong. All right, all right. Suppose we do begin and try to concentrate, huh? Now, let's get the formula started. Uh, did you get the blood? Yes. I think you ought to double the dexachlorine. Yes, that's a good idea. I don't want to take any more chances on halfway happenings. Alcohol? Uh, less of that if we're increasing the dexachlorine. Is that all right? Good, good. Now, three drops of the blood. Perfect. Yes, it's working. All right, seal it up and give it 24 hours. And tomorrow night at this time, we'll start the first one on this way. Now, Caligula is going on patrol. Marty? Marty? Oh, what? What's the matter? There's something outside the window. What? <clears throat> what do you mean, something? Listen. I don't hear anything except the crickets. Something's watching us. I feel it. We're on the top floor. You want me to see if someone's clinging to the vine? Don't be sarcastic. Well, you're the one who said I was imagining things. All right. Go back to sleep. Oh, no. I'll take a look. But in the morning, I think we'll just tell the Carsons that we... Ah! Oh! Grief. It's that crow. Oh, get it away. Oh. It was on the windowsill. Hey, keep it out. Keep it out. It's all right. It's gone. Oh, well, where is it now? It, it flew off into the pine trees. Oh, oh, that was such a shock. That's what was looking at us. Oh, oh gosh, I, I guess it has the run of the place. We're the intruders to him. I don't know. Oh. There was something about the way that bird looked at us when we drove in. Do you remember? <sighs> Sitting on the pillars? Yeah. That's no ordinary bird. Crows don't react this way to people. What do you mean, Marty? That crow didn't land on our windowsill by accident. I told you yesterday when we drove up, I didn't want to stay. I couldn't put my finger on it. But there's evil here. Real evil. Marty. And I don't think there's anything we can do to get away from it. It would seem that a pleasant weekend in the suburbs is strictly for the birds. It's certainly turning into an ordeal for a couple of New Yorkers named Charlotte and Marty Lanning. But maybe they're overreacting. So what if a crow happens to land on their windowsill? So what if the Carsons seem unusually interested in their state of health? So what if the house seems pervaded with evil? So what? Well, we'll find out when I return shortly with Act Two. Time now to return to our weekend in the country. Our three guests have no idea what their strange hosts are up to. And as a matter of fact, neither have I. But from the things they say and do, I'm sure it bodes evil for Bert, Marty, and Charlotte. It's morning now, and somehow the mysteries of night don't seem so menacing in the morning light. Good morning! Hi, Bert. You're up early. I'm going to jog two miles before sunup. Oh, you put me to shame. I'd have gone further if I had more sleep. Those damn birds kept me awake half the night. Any sign of our host yet? Uh, yeah, Rhoda's in the kitchen. Uh, said she'd serve breakfast out here on the patio. You mean Caligula paid you a visit, too? Caligula? Yeah, the Carson's pet crow. It was watching us till I got up and chased it off. No, no, this wasn't a crow. It was a whole bunch of birds. A bunch of birds? Yeah. They seemed to be inside the house. We didn't hear anything like that. Your room's on the other side from ours. Are you sure they were inside? Well, it sounded like it. I wouldn't be surprised at anything strange around here. Uh, what's with the crow you mentioned? You haven't seen it? It has a perch outside one of the upstairs windows. 
It was waiting for us when we drove in yesterday. It wasn't waiting, really. It just happened to be sitting on the pillars by the drive. And it just happened to be looking in on us last night? Marty thinks it's spying on us. That's just what it's doing. That bird is trained. Well, why would it be watching us? This is just a fun weekend, isn't it? I'm not so sure. Oh, Caligula's just curious, Marty. I'm so sorry he disturbed you last night. More coffee, anyone? It's just a little disconcerting to wake up and have a huge black bird on your windowsill. (laughs) Shades of Edgar Allan Poe. Seek of the devil, there it is. Oh, it's it's flying right toward us. I think it's joining us. He's landed right on your chair. Well, good morning, Caligula, you naughty bird. You kept our guests awake. Oh, that's Caligula. (laughs) He's big, all right. You have him trained, don't you? Well, in a way, I suppose. But he has an independent spirit, don't you, Caligula? Now that I see it up close, it... It... It what? Uh, the eyes are so strange. Well, they're just crow's eyes to me. Oh, they have an intelligence. Well, of course birds are intelligent. But only bird lovers seem to acknowledge it. That's weird. Those eyes almost look familiar. It's the first time he's seen a crow that close. Oh, it gives me the chills. I'm afraid I'm not really a bird lover, Rhoda. Oh, for heaven's sake, Marty, you've insulted him. No, no, not really. The Caligula never stays long. <laughs> Look at him fly. Uh, I was telling Marty and Charlotte I heard birds all night. From my room, it sounded as though they were in the house. Of course. We have a small aviary upstairs. Of course, sometimes the birds are restless at night. Would you like to see them? I'd love to. Well, come along then. I'm afraid our country living can be distracting at times. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Oh, morning, morning, Robert. Oh, I was just going to show our guest the aviary, Robert. Uh, all right, you go along. I'll get some coffee. We won't be long. I thought we'd spend the day on the yacht. I called Rusty, told him to get it ready. Lovely idea. Oh, they're all so beautiful. It seems a shame to keep them cooped up. Oh, they don't mind. They're safe from harm. They certainly know you. Look at the way they all flock to your side of the cage. Yes, you're my lovelies, aren't you? Now, this Lord Black, that's Eva. They all have names? Well, of course. And the blue jay is Napoleon. And this little finch here is Carl. How are you, sweet? And this one's the Fuhrer. He has a mean streak, but we love him. I don't see how you can keep track of so many. Oh, but they're all special to us. Each one has its own distinctive personality. That one seems to like you, Bert. Look at him. <laughs> Giving me the eye, all right. Oh, look at that. It's rubbing its head against your finger. Mm. Affectionate little thing. Birds give me the creeps. I don't like the way they stare. Oh, you're just a city boy, Marty. Well, shall we go? Robert wants to go on the yacht. I know you'll all enjoy it. been accepted. Good. I didn't think there'd be a problem. And the others? There seemed to be a favorable response. Nothing individual, but favorable. Well, now we can relax. Until tonight. Oh, oh pardon me. <laughs> All that sun and salt air today. I can't keep my eyes open. It was heavenly, though. And all that food. I think we'll both turn in, if you don't mind. We want to get an early start for the city tomorrow. Oh, please, do as you wish. It is getting late. Today was tiring. Good night, everybody. I think I'll go up, too. You want to ride into the city tomorrow, Bert? Oh, sure, if you don't mind. Uh, good night. Night. How long do you think? We'll give him an hour. I have some things to attend to down here. I'll meet you in the waiting room. In fact, it looks better than usual. The blood was very rich when I drew it. Ah, oh, this one's going to be a complete success. It better be, considering who we're dealing with this time. Nothing is going to go wrong. We've had our mistakes, but then who hasn't? Lucifer himself isn't perfect. Robert, don't blaspheme at a time like this. Relax, my dear. 
This will be one of our biggest successes. I dread facing him if it isn't. I should think after all these centuries you'd realize that we are in control. We may have our orders, but the fact remains that we are in control of the waiting room. Are you going to wait the full hour? No, I don't think so. Caligula is going to check on the landings now, and then we'll get started. Oh, uh, open the window for me, will you, dear? So I can let him out? Of course. Make it quick. Oh, I'm Bush. But it's been such a pleasant weekend. I don't know why you wasted so much time being suspicious. Uh, I don't either. It was just a feeling I had. I guess I made more of everything than I should have. Thinking that crow was spying on us was really... Well, not silly exactly, but a bit overdone. I'll still say those eyes were familiar. When it sat on Rhoda's chair this morning, I knew I'd seen those eyes before. Well, nothing's happened. The Carsons have been wonderful. They just like birds, that's all. You're right, I guess. Uh, I'll be glad to head back for good old Manhattan tomorrow. (sighs) Good night, honey. Wait a minute. What is it? Outside the window. What? I thought I heard that crow again. Can you see anything? No. Come back to bed. Oh, it doesn't matter. The heck with it. See you in the morning. Night. You're back. Thanks. Well? The Lannings are in bed. Marty heard me outside the window, but he didn't seem to care. He's completely unsuspecting. Well, they're planning to leave in the morning. But we both know they won't be. Can't we take them tonight, too? We don't have to. But don't worry about them. We'll get to them tomorrow afternoon. Let's get down to the business at hand. Now you get things ready, and I'll go for Bert. Still awake? Uh, yeah, d- just a second. I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, it's okay. Uh, what's up? Uh, I need a hand for a minute. Do you mind? No, not at all. Follow me. Yes, my lovely. We're on our way. Just be patient. The waiting is almost over. Oh, Robert. Oh, hello, Bert. What are we doing in here? Uh, you said you wanted to help with something. Yes. You're going to help us. Uh, what is this? W- what's going on? Relax. I just want you to lie down. Here. Lie down? On that? Lie down, please. But, well, what are those straps for? It, it, what are you doing? Rhoda, the syringe. It, you're crazy. I, I'm not staying here. It's... This will calm your nerves. What, what just is... a little pinprick. Look, I don't know what you're doing, but... I'm not going to hurt you. This doesn't hurt at all. You won't know anything is happening. What are you doing with that bird? It... Why is it out of its cage? Just lie down. You can't resist. No, I can't resist. I don't want to. I'll adjust the straps just as a precaution. Just a precaution... He's going under fast. Yes, so much the better. Robert. What is it? In the south wing. The light just went on in the landing's room. Oh, damn. All right, finish the straps. I'll be right back. I knew I heard it in the house. So what? It's none of our business. Will you go and see? Oh, all right. I feel like a fool. It's a bird, all right. You happy now? Well, it sounds as though it's in trouble or something. Look, the Carsons have hundreds of birds. They'll take care of it. That's the point, Marty. They're not doing anything for it or it wouldn't be so frantic. I think we should tell them. Come on. Darn it, Charlotte. You think they can't hear it, too? Well, I'm going to find out what the matter is. Something's wrong. What is this all of a sudden? You wanted to leave well enough alone. It's none of our business. It's their home. It's their bird. Are you coming with me or not? All right. All right, I'm coming. Marty, Charlotte, is something wrong? You're not ill. Oh, no, no. We were just coming to find you. There's something the matter with one of your birds. Don't you hear it? 
Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Rhoda's with it now. Oh, it sounds so frantic. What's the matter oh, with it? Oh, just a minor upset. Some species are very susceptible. There. It's quiet now. Please, go back to bed. I'm sorry it disturbed you. Come on, Charlotte. I assure you there's nothing to worry about. All right. I'm, I'm sorry I made such a fuss. Good night again. Good night. What did they want? They heard the bird they were coming to investigate. It's good we caught them in time. The bird and the vessel are both under. Good. We're ready, then. The wait is over, my Führer. The wait for you is over at last. What time is it, hon? Oh, seven o'clock. We'd better get down for breakfast. What's it like out? Beautiful. Clear. Oh, there's Bert by the pool. Morning, Bert. We'll be right down. The Carsons won't mind if we leave right after breakfast. That's funny. What? Bert. He looked up when I called, but then he turned away and hurried into the house. So? I well, could have waved and said hello or something. Well, that's true. Well, maybe he hasn't had his coffee yet. I'm dying for mine. Let's go. We'll load the car later. Okay. If you think that's best. I do. Oh, I guess some Carsons must be in the kitchen. I hear voices. It is impossible for me to remain any Stop. longer. I agree. My Führer. The sooner the better. And again... I must compliment you it's on your Bert. choice of a vessel. The German accent. The young man, What's Bobby, he doing? is perfect. It was worth the wait. We're happy you're pleased, Pura. We thought we made a good choice. It was a relief to be free at last. I'm most anxious to get back to Germany. And I shall use the cover identification of... Uh, what, what's his name? Bert Thomas. Bert Thomas. Splendid American name, too. Makes it much easier. I suggest you take a cab to the station. Arrangements have been made in New York for everything. Good. And you're sending the uh, other? Today, Fuhrer. Splendid. And I'd be on my way. You both do an excellent job. It will take us a while to regain control, but this time we'll certainly line up a more dependable group of allies. Marty, is he kidding? Am I dreaming? Maybe we both are. Hitler? Hitler? The spirit of Adolf Hitler released from the waiting room? But then we did hear that conversation, if we can believe our ears. And if we are to believe them, we know that Hitler is once more abroad, this time in the body of a healthy young American man. That's what's happened so far. What is yet to happen, we'll learn when I return shortly with Act Three. Well, I've returned as I promised with Act Three, but I'm not sure I want to return to that creepy house and that weird Carson couple. I'm afraid we have no choice, though. We simply can't leave Marty and Charlotte alone with such people. And I'm rather curious to learn if that really was Adolf Hitler who walked out in the body of the fellow we knew as Bert Thomas. It was a neat trick. And perhaps we'll learn how it's done. They've gone out the front door. What'll we do? Come on, out to the patio. We've got to act as though we didn't hear anything. And we've got to leave here fast. I don't know what's going on, but we're getting out of it. That was Bert we heard and saw. But they called him Fuhrer. He talked about going back to Germany. It, it doesn't make sense. It isn't true. It couldn't be. It's a crazy charade they're all playing, and somehow I think we're the ducks. We don't know anything about the Carsons or Bert Thomas. I don't know what they want from us, but they're not going to get it. What do you think they meant by the others? Bert, whoever he is, said you're, you're sending the others? I have a hunch it has something to do with us, but we're not waiting around to find out. Oh, I can't help thinking about that bird last night and Robert showing up in the hall just as we went out. Yes. I know what you're thinking. But none of it adds up. It doesn't explain what happened to Bert. Charlotte, look at this. What? A spot of fresh earth by the house. What are you doing? I'm just poking around with a stick. Fresh dug earth usually means something buried. <gasps> Artie. A dead bird. I'm sure that's the bird Rhoda said they called the Fuhrer because he had a mean streak. 
The bird is dead. And Bert's... Oh, Marty. It can't be. Come on, back to our room. We're getting our things. Shh. Uh Uh-oh. Where did it come from? I don't know. But Caligula has his eye on us. I didn't even hear him land. There wasn't a sound. Neither did I. But he's there, all right. And I don't think he wants us to get by. We can get past him, can't we? I don't know. With that beak and those claws, if he's as trained as I think he is... You mean he has us trapped? I don't think we'll go anywhere he doesn't want us to. How can a bird like that... Look at it closely. Look at the eyes. You talked about the eyes yesterday. What do you mean? Look at them. Don't you see? What? Those are Robert's eyes. What is... Come on, Charlotte. We'll try it. Around the front of the house. Oh! Oh! Oh, get it away! Get off! Oh, get it away! Get off, you! Oh, 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 oh what's happening? What's happening? Just this way, quick. Back this way. Oh, he won't let us get away. It's there everywhere we turn. Yes. Everywhere we turn. Oh, why? There's no use fooling ourselves. The Carsons have us right where they want us. Not quite. Now, well, both come with me, please. Rhoda, what is this? Oh, please, Rhoda, what are you doing to us? We came up for a pleasant weekend. And now you'll serve our purpose. Come inside. No, we won't. You listen to me, Rhoda. I don't know what's going on here, but I want to know what happened to Bert. What's all this Fuhrer stuff? What are you trying to do? How do you do? know about that? We heard and saw him this morning. That was a mistake we should not have made. Come inside. No, we're leaving now. Caligula's already shown you how futile that idea is. Why, Rhoda? Why us? It has to be. You've been chosen and accepted. Now come with me. First of all, forget about any more resistance or violence, Marty. There's no escape. You have no right to keep us. And arguments are useless, too. What are you going to do to me? What we did with Bert. Exchange a soul for a soul. I'm sorry you have to be strapped down, but it's necessary. What did happen to Bert? Why was he putting on that Hitler act? Oh, that was no act. He now is Hitler. Don't you see now what the waiting room is? I think I'm beginning to. In each of our little fetid friends here, there's a spirit waiting to be released. A spirit waiting for a new body and another chance to finish what they started in another life. Last night, we gave Adolf Hitler his new chance. Adolf Hitler now inhabits Bert Thomas's former body. Only Rhoda and I know the process of transformation. Then there are other... Oh, hundreds, hundreds, as you can see. But the spirits we care for here tend to be what you and the world would call unsavory. Criminals, murderers, political tyrants. Have you ever thought what might happen in the world if Adolf Hitler and Napoleon Bonaparte were allies? You are crazy. Oh, think what you like. The fact is that soon, very soon, these two giants will combine their genius for destruction. Oh, you're going to turn me into Napoleon? Oh, I see you take it lightly, eh? No, it doesn't matter. There are many preparations before the final tyranny envelops the world. But we know what we're doing. We've been practicing for centuries. Robert, stop talking and let's get on with it. Please. This is the start of the grand finale. All the evils of history released on Earth at once. Shut up. You're giving away too much. Now stop it. All right. Give me the syringe. Marty, you are the first person other than Rhoda and me to ever witness a transformation. It's quite miraculous. Stop. Please. Whatever madness you're doing, don't do it to Charlotte. Her appearance won't change at all. Just a short sleep, and then you'll see. Oh, here's Eva. She's ready, but she's very upset. I don't know what's the matter with her. Well, she's excited because she knows she's on her way back to Argentina to prepare the way for Juan. And in such an innocent and beautiful body... You see, Marty, the Perones, of course, are most important. Oh, more restless than usual. I don't like it. Well, put her in the electrolog, Kaiser. She's all right. There's nothing wrong. No, something is definitely wrong. I don't think we should go through with it now. Releasing Hitler first may have been a mistake. What's done cannot be undone. We will continue right now. 
Stop. Stop that. I can't Stop. control her. Get it off I me. I can't. They're all going wild. Uh, off. They go crazy. Oh, it's out of control. Close the cage. It's out of control. I can't. Close the cage. They're all over me. Get back. Get oh, back, Robert, you devil. Get stop back. Me. Stop me, Robert. Help I, me. I can't. Sorry. I'll get, get them straps off. We've got get to get back. out if we can. Mind what's what's happening, Robert. The birds are attacking. We have a second to lose. There. That's one way. Now you see. Get away. Get up, Charlotte. Quick. They're not after us. They only seem to be after the car. Rhoda, I can't see. My eyes, I can't see anymore. Rhoda, let's go. Run. I, I can't anymore. I can't change. Down the stairs and outside, fast. Sit down here, Charlotte. Oh, we're safe now. Oh, it's not real. It can't be. It can't be happening. They're still flying all over the house. They're tearing it apart. Marty, let's get out of here. Now, please. Wait, look. Up there. They're all flying out of the house. Oh. One great flock. Oh, they're after us now. Marty. No. No, look. They're flying off. All together. Oh. Thank heaven. They're gone. They're gone. Just like that. Now's our chance. We've got to leave. There's not a sound from the house. I won't go back there. No, I have to. I have to see. You stay here. No, I won't leave you. I won't be alone. Come on, then. Good Lord, look at it. It's horrible. It's a shambles, the drapes, the upholstery. It's like a cyclone hit it. Let's not go upstairs. I have to, Charlotte. Oh, those beautiful paintings. Flashed to ribbons. It's unbelievable. You can't believe they could cause destruction like this. I can't go in that room, Marty. I can't. Wait here. Don't come any closer, Charlotte. You shouldn't see this. Them? Yes. What's left of them. Oh. Oh, Marty. Let's go. I'm going to faint. Come on downstairs and sit down. I'm going to call the police. What time is it? 8.30. It's only been a half hour since we first came down and this whole thing started. Oh, I wish the police would get here. What are you going to tell them? No one could believe what we've been through. We'll tell them the story. That's all we can do. They'll think we're crazy if we try to tell them Hitler's alive. Or that Napoleon and Eva Perona are flying around as birds. They'll think we killed the Carsons and wrecked the house. I know. But I saw too much not to believe it. I wonder where Bert... Or Hitler is. Here come the police. Oh, thank God. Morning. Uh, you the people who called... Yes, I'm Marty Lanning, and this is my wife, Charlotte. Yeah, sorry I took so much time getting here. I had another call to answer. Uh, uh, what's the trouble here? Come inside. You'll have to see for yourself. I'll give you the details. Wow. Never seen anything like this in Rose Hill. The, uh, the birds did it. It all began... Uh, uh, wait a minute. You, you, you said birds did this? I know. It sounds impossible. The whole thing's been impossible, but what I'm going to tell you is true. Well, where did these birds come from? The Carsons kept them as pets in a room upstairs. The birds went crazy. They did this to the house, and then they flew off. The, uh, the bodies of the Carsons are upstairs. It's the truth, officer. It was hideous. The Carsons are dead. It's not a pretty sight. Well, i got to get to my radio. got to get help out here and get out and alert fast. An alert? Yeah, we got real trouble. Uh, that call I was on before I came here was at the railroad station. A flock of crazy birds attacked a guy waiting for a train. What? Yeah, according to the witnesses on the platform, they came out of nowhere. Hundreds of them. They flew around as though they were uh, after something in particular. Then they swooped down on this poor guy. <laughs> that was the end of him. Marty. Um, do you know who he was? Yeah, yeah, he had identification. A uh, young attorney from the city. His name was uh, Bert Thomas. Uh, what's the matter? You you know him? 
He was a guest here, too. He left earlier this morning. Oh, this gets deeper all the time. Why would the birds go after Thomas the way they did the Carsons? I don't know. Oh, we got a flock of crazy birds out there. Heaven help Rose Hill if we don't get them. They are killers. Yes. Indeed they are. They'll never catch the birds. But don't worry about a flock of killer birds being on the loose. They've already done in their intended victims. The resurrection of Hitler, if you believe it, proved to be too much even for history's most hardened criminals. So the waiting room is empty. And until someone comes along to take the Carson's place, those birds will just be birds. I'll return with some more thoughts on the subject shortly. so much about the evildoers, those of yesterday and today, and so little of the good. Much of the good in the world seems to go unnoticed. I suspect, though, that evil is the tip of the iceberg, because somehow we like to dwell on it and give it more visibility. But underneath the surface lies that vast concentration of good, so overwhelming in its power that throughout history, evil in the end, has always been defeated. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Marion Seldes, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>